doing uh, a tutorial on how to cold and dark start the A2A uh, B17. This is a really well done uh, ultra realistic module made by A2A Simulations with Accusim. It was released uh, in 2008 I believe for the original 2006 version of FSX. Now uh, I have this and I'm using this uh, module in Prepare 3D version 3. Uh, version 3 is a bit outdated, especially for today, but hey, I like it. So, we will be running through the A2A officials, A2A start uh, checklist. I'll have a link down for the manual for their website. Alright, so we're going to start off uh, by checking the fuel. Alright, so I brought up the fuel panel here and you can see uh, I'm not going to be doing a full flight. I'm not even going to take off in this aircraft today. I'm just going to be starting it up and shutting it back down. Uh, but before you would start it up, you would want to check, make sure you have fuel. If you don't, uh, then you'd want to put fuel in it. Check your engine oil, your heating fluid, or your, your glycol, and the hydraulic fluid. You would also want to check your maintenance hanger make sure you don't have any damaged broken or worn out parts uh, just make sure that everything's running well because you don't want to be taken off just to realize that you have a uh, blown turbocharger or a bad gear motor so yeah that'd be pretty bad so make just make sure everything is uh, taken care of there all right so we're going to start off uh, by making sure the parking brake is set, flaps and gear neutral, freedom of controls. It's very important. You can see here my controls are locked. Go ahead, unlock the ailerons. Uh, press shift and three. Go ahead and unlock here. You can see now I have all the freedom to move the controls. You don't want to be taken off just to realize you have no elevator where your controls are locked because that can become pretty catastrophic. Also go outside, make sure everything's moving the way it's supposed to, which it is. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our uh, batteries and electronics. So this gauge is very important. This is our uh, AC voltmeter. And here's our electrical panel. So we're going to turn on all three of our batteries. And you'll hear the batteries start up. Now you'll notice we don't have any readings on the voltmeter. That's because uh, we need to turn on the inverter. And that's converting the DC volts to AC, alternating current. As you can see, we have a steady 18.4 volts. We're going to be checking the health of all three of these batteries. Uh, it's not necessary, but it's recommended. So we're going to be checking battery 1, 18.3. Uh, Check battery 2, 17.3. Uh, and battery 3. 17.3. Alright, so now we're going to have these all running. Uh, let's go ahead and turn on our generators for when we start the engines. And now we're going to go ahead and tell the crew to start up the APU. The APU, the auxiliary power unit, is a reciprocating uh, APU, just like a generator for your RV. Yes, sir. All right, so now he'll start it any second now. All right. Now keep a uh, keep an eye on this right here. Captain, power's coming online. All right, so now we have a steady 28.7 volts. All right, now we're going to move over to our uh, hydraulic pressure. This here is our hydraulic pressure gauge. We're going to uh, jump over into our co-pilot seat and pull pump the manual lever 10 times. All right, 
Now we're gonna come back to our electrical panel and you'll see this red uh, red switch right here. This is the hydraulic pump. You want to click and hold for three seconds. And you'll see it'll take care of itself. Now we're going to open our cutoff for our engines. All the way. And now, this is important, very important. This here is our carburetor air cleaner. Just like the filter on the engine on your lawnmower, it is very important on keeping uh, particles such as dirt, rocks, small birds, and bugs out of your engine. Uh, it's just a very important uh, thing to note. So, as you'll notice, they are off. So, the uh, engines are running purely off of ram air. So, if we can take a look on the exterior. If you look on the wings, you'll notice these uh, slots right here. These, This is the ram air gate, which uh, basically just sucks in raw air from outside and pumps it straight to the engine. Uh, if you read here... Operations under 15,000 feet, uh, you'll want to have the filter on to avoid, uh, oh I'm sorry, hang on, operations, so the filter will be off for any operations above 15,000 feet to avoid detonation and turbo overspeed filter on for all ground operations and flight up to 15,000 feet. So 15,000 feet and below have the filters on, 15,000 feet and above have the, or yeah, have the filters off. So around 15,000 you can go ahead and turn the filters off. Anything below that, turn them on because uh, you don't want to have any turbo overspeed or pre-detonation. So we're going to go ahead, turn that on. It'll take a second for those doors to close, and these will then light up yellow. Alright, next we're going to go ahead and check our temperature, so it says nice cabin temp. Uh, if it's a cold or a hot day, if it's a hot day you can have the windows open. That's just what I'm going to do right now. Have the windows open. This would be your cabin temperature. You can move it to on for a cold day or just have it off or cold or whatever. I'm just going to have it off because we'll be using uh, outside air. Now we're going to move on to our ignition. So master ignition on. Magnetos set to both. Manifold pressure, select to zero, which it is. All right, so now we are ready. Uh, oh, we also have to take care of our cow flaps and our uh, fuel pumps. We're gonna go ahead and turn on, we're gonna open our fuel valves and turn on our fuel booster pumps. We're gonna tell our uh, co-pilot to manage the RPM cowl flaps, and intercoolers. Yes, Captain, I've got them. All right, so now the AI is managing uh, RPM, cowl flaps, and the intercoolers over here. You can see they just went down. All right, so now we're going to jump into our co-pilot seat, and you'll notice this little circle down here. This is our primer. Uh, our sequence for starting these engines is going to be engine 3, 4, 2, and then 1. Uh, while we're doing that, we're going to set our extinguisher for engine 3. In case if we have an uh, explosion or a fire, we can easily uh, pull the fire handle and it'll put it out or suppress it. Here's our fuel pressure gauges, oil pressure, temperature. You're going to keep an eye on these when starting the engines. Uh, you're going to go ahead and crack the throttles just a bit. Alright. 
We're gonna go ahead and prime engine number three. Prime it twice, I'd say. All right. Now, the way the uh, starter works, there's a motor that turns over a big inertia wheel. That inertia wheel spins at a very high RPM, and then when it's ready, it turns over uh, that high amount of energy and then cranks over the engine. We're going to flip that to start, wait a couple seconds, and then wait till he uh, calls out clear prop, which means clear prop. Okay, so now we're going to turn over engine three. So, turning three. So keep an eye over here while this starts. It's trying to start. Engine there we three go. is starting up. Oil pressure is rising. Close that just a bit. Now we're going to start engine number four. So, come down here.
there you go. That is how you successfully start up a V17 Model G. Uh, next, I'll do a takeoff and in-flight tutorial. Uh, I'll do a tutorial on some of the systems, how to operate and fine-tune the uh, turbochargers and the autopilot and stuff like that. And so, yeah.